Hi, my name is Bohal Rahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the norm of a vector and the scalar product of two vectors. We are going to try to define these two concepts, give some examples, and try to connect these two concepts at the end. So let's define, first of all, the norm of the vector on the two-dimensional space, so essentially for the vectors which are given with the two components. And then we're going to try to generalize this concept for the higher-dimensional vectors. And also we're going to discuss about the properties of the norms. So let's say we are given a vector on the two-dimensional space so with the with the components x and y so what does it mean it means that the ending point of this vector is going to be at this point x and y so this is going to be our vector and what i would like to do is i would like to create the triangle with the right angle like this and this side of the triangle the height of this triangle is going to be equal to the y essentially the y coordinate of the point and the width of this triangle is going to be equal to the x, or well, the x coordinate of this point. And using so called Pythagoras theorem, we can find the length of the hypotenuses, or the longest side, right? So let's say this is going to be our vector u, then the length of this vector u is equal to square root of x in the square plus y in the square and this is we are going to define as the norm of this vector here and we are going to denote the norm of the vector u was the two vertical lines before the vector and at the end of the vector and this is going to be x in the square plus y in the square in two-dimensional space so let's do first of all an example then we're going to try to generalize this idea of all the high dimensional vectors Let's say we are given a vector u with the components 2 and 3. So in order to find its length, I would like to draw a rectangular coordinate system again, one more time. So this is x and this is y. So we've got this vector. Oh, let, let me draw this like. Oh, this, this vector with the components 2 and 3. Right? And uh, I would like to create the triangle. So the height of this triangle is going to be equal to the 3, as you can see from the image. And this is nothing else as the y coordinate of this vector. And the width of this triangle is going to be equal to the 2, which is nothing else as the, uh, so, uh, as the width of this triangle. So height is 3, width is equal to the 2. Then we can find the length of this vector or the norm of this vector here. And this is going to be equal to the square root of 2 in the square plus 3 in the square, which is going to be equal to the 4 plus 9, which is square root of 13. So this is how we are going to find the norm of vector. And let's define the norm of the vector for the higher dimensional cases. So let's say you are given a vector u in the n-dimensional space. What it means that it means we are given a vector with n components then the norm of this vector u is defined as the square root of u1 in the square plus u2 in the square plus n so on plus un in the square. Well, for example, if you are given a vector u with four components, minus 2, 1, 0, and 9, then the norm of this vector u is going to be equal to the minus 2 in the square plus 1 in the square plus 0 in the square plus 9 in the square. So if we sum all of the components, uh, it's going to be 4 plus 1 plus 0 plus 81. And this is going to be square root of 86. So this is going to be the norm of this four dimensional vector. So let's talk about the properties of the norm. There are essentially three important properties. So in order to define the properties, we're going to define the vectors. So let's say we are given two vectors, u and v, from the n-dimensional space and some constant, which is some real number. Then the first property of the norm is the norm is always non-negative. 
And this is essentially true, and this is the proof of this property is coming from the definition. If you, if you remember, the definition of the vector was u1 in the square plus and so on, u in, in the square, then we have to take the square root, which can be a negative number. So you're essentially always adding the positive numbers and you're taking the square root from the positive number, which is going to be a positive number, right? Or not negative, let's say. So the second property is telling us that the norm of this u is equal to the zero implies that this is simply a zero vector. So this is equal to the zero if and only if u is simply the zero vector. So all the components of this vector u is equal to the zero. And if you remember, we discussed about the this expression if and only if, what does it mean? So it basically means that, hey, if the norm of the vector u is equal to the zero, then it implies that the u is simply the zero vector. But at the same time, if you are given the zero vector, then its norm is equal to the zero. So essentially, it works in the both of the directions. So in the third property, is going to reveal us the connection between the multiplication of a constant and the vector. So essentially, if you are multiplying the constant to the vector and take its norm, it appears you can take out this constant out of the norm. So by just uh, taking its absolute value. So the absolute value of the k times is the norm of the u. So this is especially useful for the theoretical purposes. So later on, we're going to talk about some properties, theorems, and so on. And in this regard, it is really important to know to to know this property. So again, so uh, here are three properties. We're not really going to prove them, but I would like to give you a couple of examples, especially for the last property. So let's try to reveal this property. So the uh, reveal the, uh, the understand this property. Let's say. So we are going to do an example. So let's say k a constant is given as a minus two, and the vector u is given was the components two and four, for example. Okay. So I would like to first of all evaluate this side of this equation, then this side, the right hand side part of this equation. Okay, then I would like to show that the one is going to be equal to the two. So let's evaluate the left hand side of this equation. So in order to do this, we have to multiply first of all k to the u. It's going to be equal to the minus two, two and four. And when we multiply a constant to the vector, so this constant basically penetrates through the vector. So actually, it's going to be multiplied to all of the components of this vector. So it's going to be minus four and minus eight. And if you find the norm of the KU, it's going to be equal to the, uh, to, to the 16 plus 64, which is going to be 80, square root of 80. We actually can take out the 2 out of the square root, right? So we can write this down as a 4 times the Z, uh, to, to, to the 20, right? Then this is going to be 2 square root of 20. Okay, because this 4 is going out from the square root as the 2. Now we are going to calculate the second part of this equation. So in this case, we have to find, first of all, the norm of the u, which is going to be square root of 4, or essentially 2 in the square, 2 in the square plus 4 in the square, which is going to be square root of 4 plus 16, which is the square root of 20, right? And the absolute value of the k is equal to the 2. So essentially, the absolute value of the k times the norm of the u is going to give you the same number again. So the 2 times the square root of 20. So 1 is equal to the 2. Okay? But again, so we need this property more for the theoretical purposes when we need to scale the vectors and find the norm of the scaled version of the vectors. So now let's discuss about another important operation of the vectors, which is called a scalar product. Scalar product between the vectors. So let's say uh, you are given a two vectors. So let u and v are two two-dimensional vectors. So let's try to define this for the 2D vectors, then we're going to generalize this for the high-dimensional cases. So it means that the u is given was the two components, sorry, u1 and u2, 
and a v is also given was the two components v1 and v2 then essentially the u norm uh, u times is a v as a as a scalar product is going to be the multiplication of the u1 to the v1 plus the u2 to the v2 okay so sometimes we call this multiplication as the dot product as well because by the notation here we use the dot in order to show that we're multiplying these two vectors as a dot product. So essentially there are other type of the multiplication of the vectors, but this dot product is is, is important one. So and also we uh, so we are going to put this dot in order to show that hey we are multiplying these two vectors exactly using this way using this method so please note that this is called a scalar product because when you multiply the two vectors like this is the vector and and it, it, it might be 2d or 3d so when we say the 2d and 3d it means that the vectors are coming with the two tuples the three tuple this is also a vector and when you multiply this you're going to get a scalar so this is going to be number so that's why it's called a scalar product so let's do an example, a small example. So let's say u is given as the two at minus three, and a v is given as the one and four. And if you multiply the u to the v, it's gonna be two times to the one, plus minus three times to the four. It's gonna be two minus 12, which is minus 10. Okay, you see, so this is again, this two, uh, unit, units are the vectors, and this is a, a, a scalar. So that's why it's called the scalar product. So we can generalize this idea for the higher dimensional cases as well. So let's say you are given two vectors, u and v, or two vectors from the uh, Rn, so the n dimensional vectors. So u is going to be defined with the n tuple, and the v is going to be defined as the n tuple, then the multiplication of the u to the v as the scalar product is going to be u1 times the v1 plus u2 times the v2 plus n so on plus un times the vn. Well, this is how we are going to define the vectors, uh, the multiplication of the two vectors, the scalar multiplication of the two vectors in the higher dimensional spaces. So in this regard now, it is really important for us to try to understand what is the connection between the norm of the vector and the scalar product. So let's discuss the norm versus scalar product. So if you remember, we defined the norm of it. So let's say you are given a u vector in the n dimensional space. So it is coming with the n components, right? Then the norm of the u vector is defined as the square root of u1 in the square plus u2 in the square plus n so on plus un in the square. At the same time, the multiplication of the u to the u is going to be equal to. So I'm going to multiply this vector to itself, u1, u2, and so on, un. Okay, so it means that every component, so corresponding components are going to be multiplied to itself. So u1 times the u1 is u1 in the square plus u2 in the square plus u3 in the square plus and so on plus un in the square. So now, if you look to the right hand side parts of these two equations, they look very similar, right? So essentially, you can connect the norm of the vector with the scalar product. By just multi by just squaring the norm, right? So by just looking to this equation, the definitions of the norm and the scalar product, we can see that the norm of the vector u in the square is equal to the u dot u. So this is really important equation, and we're going to use this a lot. I would like to show you some numerical example here, but uh, we need this equation not for the numerical purposes, not for the uh, exercises, numerical exercises. We need this for the analytical or theoretical purposes. For theoretical purposes. So later on, we will see that we need to basically expand the norm of some vectors, and we can expand this using the dot product. 
So let's do a small example. So let's say u is given as the 2 and minus 4 and 1, let's say. Then the norm of the u, then the norm of this u vector is going to be square root of 4 plus 16 plus 1, which is going to be square root of 21. The norm of the vector u in the square is going to be 21, right? Then the u dot u is going to be defined as a 2 minus 4 and 1 times as a 2 minus 4 and 1. We need to multiply 2 with the 2, which is going to be 4. Minus 4 was the minus 4, which is going to be 16. So 1 was this 1, which is going to be equal to the 1, which is going to be equal to the 21. So they are the same. But again, so we need this equation for the theoretical purposes. Well, in this lecture, we discuss about the norm of a vector in 2D and in higher dimensional spaces. We discuss about the scalar product between the two vectors and also try to connect the scalar product with the norm using the following equation. So in our next lectures, we're going to try to discuss about the angles between the vectors. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that this was helpful.